never listened to the album A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships by the 1975, you absolutely should. It's a beautiful record with some amazing sound design across the whole thing. One sound in particular that struck me immediately the first time I heard it was this beautiful piano texture, twinkling, cascading thing. I didn't know what it was. It was absolutely lovely. Maddie and George actually talk about this sound in an interview they did with the podcast Tape Notes. I'll link to it in the description below. What they did is they recorded pianos, one note at a time, and then octaves of that note at seemingly random timings, and then took that file, put it into the OP-1, then when they played it back at different pitches, the timings of the notes would never be exactly the same, and so they would create these beautiful cascading rhythms. I was really interested to try this out myself, so I did the same thing they did. I took my piano, played one note at a time, and then an octave, an octave below, random times, not rhythmic, and then put that into the OP-1 as a sample patch and created something that sounded very, very close right out the gate. I've actually used this technique a lot after first listening to that interview. It's been really helpful when you need some sort of rhythmic texture, but you don't want it to be clocked. You just want some sort of detail going on in the background. Very, very useful. One thing I haven't tried yet though is to recreate that technique using only stock or free sounds. Obviously not everybody has access to an OP-1 or nice mics and an upright. So what sort of sound can we get if we just use Lab's soft piano and Logic's built-in sampler? Can we get close? I think we can, but we'll find out. So if you haven't yet filled up your entire hard drive with Lab software instruments, you absolutely should. They are amazing, they're free. What are you doing? Go download them, they're incredible. The most popular one that you probably have if you're watching this video, is soft piano. Soft piano has become kind of the ubiquitous sound of the melancholy cinematic felt piano thing. So I'm gonna use that and see if we can get that 1975 fluttery textured thing using the soft piano. So I'm just gonna start with recording a couple notes. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that at least my first note starts right on so that it'll make it a little more playable, but I'm not even gonna worry about the timings of anything else because they're gonna be pitched all up and down and whatever, it, it, it won't matter. It'll become soup regardless. So I'll just put this as uh, piano soup. Okay, so then I'll drag this file, boom, right into quick sampler. So this one audio file is what's gonna be pitched across the entire keyboard range. As it gets higher, it'll get faster, and so those repeats will happen more often. As it gets lower, it will be slower. Let's just see what that sounds like. It's literally took no time at all. Okay, uh, it's kind of the idea. I don't, I want it to sound, I don't know. I'm gonna try something else. Let's try doing higher and then lower. Something like that, let's try that. All right, gonna bounce that down. Oh yeah, I forgot to name it. Uh, Piano stew. Quick sampler, optimized. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, let me just move this start so it starts a little bit closer to the note. So, that's sounding pretty good. One thing I'm noticing we play it and we get these nice, lovely textures at first and then everything kind of dies out. So what we need to do is turn on a loop mode so that when the sample is finished, it actually goes back to the beginning and starts playing over again. So if we click auto loop here, we'll get a loop section that we can then play with. I kind of want this whole thing to loop. I just want it to be the exact same length of the file. So I'll drag the loop regions as far left and as far right as they will go. Now, I'll play one note so you can kind of see the file actually repeat.
Now, if we play a chord. It actually won't ever repeat itself because the speed at which they're looping is different based on the pitch. So we can, however many more notes we get, it'll be more complex. And if we do less notes, it'll be less complex. That's kind of self-explanatory. But even if we do just two notes, they're never gonna quite step on top of each other in the exact same way. What's nice is because we can start a chord with our start note being right on a note, we can still set a chord and then we still get those textures and stuff after the fact. So as we step through different chords, we just get some really beautiful sounding things. So yeah, pretty cool. I mean, that's no effects or anything on it either. So the minute we start adding some sort of delay and reverb, I think it'll really bring it to life. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a crutch, but honestly, it sounds amazing. Let's throw a little bit of Supermassive on there and let's go to space. Cool, it's sounding pretty good. So it's going looping and looping back to the beginning and playing always in the same direction. What if it, we had it go forwards and then backwards? In addition to the timings being different all the time, we're also getting reversed copies of those as well. Let's see what that sounds like if we go alternate. So now the file will play forward and then when it reaches the end of the loop, it will play back to the original point and then back and forth. Let's see what that sounds like. Not bad for a couple minutes in a free piano and tossing it into a sampler. I think that sounds pretty good. I still think the OP-1 has a bit of an edge, but you know, it's a little bit unfair to compare. The OP-1 is the number one selling synth on reverb for around $1,000. So that's a significant price hike from the Logic sampler, which is free with Logic. This, the whole thing being 200 bucks. So it's, a, it, it's not a totally fair comparison, but this is pretty dang close. And I think the flexibility and speed of doing this all in the box I, I think that's worth something. I would totally use this in a heartbeat. If you want to play with this patch yourself, I'll link to it in the description. You can download the EXS file and the samples and all that stuff. Uh, just drop a comment if you have any questions or problems installing it. If you haven't downloaded any Spitfire Audio Labs instruments, you absolutely should. They're incredible and they're free. What are you doing? Go download them. I'll link to those in the description as well. If you want to learn more about sound design and music production or anything like that, I have courses available on Skillshare and Udemy. I'll link to those in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.